This box contains 10 Canon cameras and lenses, and I bought it at an auction for $600. And based on my calculations of the used market in the United States, if everything is working in this box, we're looking at a value of around $1,400, which would be a great return on investment. But guess what? Nothing ever works entirely in untested lots. All right. Ooh, at, this is the nicest packaging that I have seen in a very long time. All individually bubble wrapped. It looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and set it on the ground and we'll get started and pull out the first camera. First camera. It's in a nice red color. Color can make a difference in the overall price of the product. For example, red and pink and blue and more unusual colors of cameras can add value versus the black and silver versions. And that's largely because they weren't made in as much quantity. So we've got a red Canon PowerShot SX420 right here. And this camera was released by Canon in 2016. And the MSRP when this camera was released was $299. So this is a bridge camera. It uses Canon's NB11L battery. And I've got a bunch of batteries right here for a variety of uh, brands. And I'm just gonna pull from those as we go through these models. Should have most everything I need there. Overall condition is good. The LCD does have a little bit of wear, um, but that's, that's normal. Put the battery in. There's already a memory card in here, so that's great. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Turns on. Wow, look at the range of that optical zoom. That's really nice. Okay, lens is working good. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the flash, which is a manual pop there. You just lift it up, and let's try to take a picture. Right out. Flash fires. So this camera I would say is in good condition. There is some wear to both the LCD and the body, but it's not bad. So value of this camera in good working condition is about $130 if you pair it with a charger and a USB cable. And I keep uh, aftermarket chargers and USB cables compatible for Canon cameras. So I can ship them out to customers whenever they buy them from me on websites like eBay. So that's a great start, $130 on this one. From my recollection, this was mostly point and shoot cameras, a DSLR camera, and a few lenses. Next up, we've got a Canon PowerShot SX120. And this camera was released when in another life, I was a camera buyer, and I actually bought this and worked directly with Canon to bring it to market to our six retail stores and our online store, where we did millions of dollars of business with Canon. So it's kind of strange that it's kind of come full circle. I'm now buying used products of the same products that I bought when they were originally released new. Very strange. Would have never thought I would have been here, but... Um... And if you're new to the channel, this is actually my full-time job, is buying and selling used digital cameras. This is only a small part of my business, is doing bulk untested lots, but it's super enjoyable to me, so that's why I continue to do it. Uh, okay. It's flashing low battery, which generally indicates that there may be something wrong with the battery compartment. So it did power on. I'm going to try some new batteries. See if that fixes it. Okay, yeah, it went away. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. Lens is very noisy. And I know a few of you have commented on lens noise of the SX100, SX110, SX120 in prior videos. Yeah, they're noisy. Generally, it doesn't affect the actual performance of the product, uh, but I remember even new when we bought this, customers were saying, why is the lens so noisy? Do, 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 do. Yeah, flash fires. So I would say this camera's in fair condition. The lens glass actually looks really nice. So that's a big plus. A lot of the times what you see with these longer range optical zoom cameras is some light lens scratches from the lens cover uh, getting a little bit of dirt or dust inside of it and actually grinding against the lens itself. So this one looks good. And value of this camera in the used market is gonna be about $40. When this camera was released, the MSRP was actually around 249. So it's gone down about 75% in value from its original release, but $40 is $40 and I will take it. 
Camera number three, Canon PowerShot A2400. This was kind of a budget uh, 16 megapixel 5X camera and it was released by Canon in 2012. And the MSRP at the time was, I think, around $160. And in the used market, in good working condition, the value actually has not changed that much. Uh, you're looking at around $125 value. So it's come up quite a bit over the last few years. Canon PowerShot models from this generation have gotten fairly popular again. Um, but uh, condition-wise, it does have some wear to both the body and the LCD. And it uses the Canon NV11L battery, just like the SX420 that we just tested. Okay, let's uh, turn it on. That's not good. And if you see it gets stuck on the menu for a long period of time, it, the camera is clearly having some sort of problem, generally a lens issue. And there is some wear on the lens front. Now it shows lens error will shut down automatically. I'm going to try another battery, just to make sure. I try to keep these batteries fully charged so I know when they're testing that they're going to work. Same thing. Get stuck on the Canon PowerShot menu. Not ideal. Yeah. Okay, so this camera is not in working condition. Um, it's likely that there's some some issue with the lens or lens mechanism. So I'll go ahead and put that in the four parts pile now. Unfortunately, we went from a va projected value on this, if it was in good working condition, of around $125 to a parts camera, if I can't get it working, of a value of around $20 to $25. So unfortunately, this one was a bit of a lemon. And that, that just is part of the game with buying untested cameras. There is risk involved, like I always say. All right, ooh, this looks like a lens. Lovely wrapping job. Ooh. Canon 55 to 250. This is a telephoto zoom lens that was launched by Canon in, I think, 2013 or 2014. And it utilizes Canon's STM technology, which is step-through motor, making video performance much better than non-STM models, like the Canon 55 to 250 IS or the IS2. If you're shooting video, this is a way better lens to get. MSRP on this lens is $299. I believe it's still offered by Canon. Uh, so it's been in production for 10 years now. Pretty wild. Uh, looks to be in good shape. There's a little bit of dust. And I always keep a Canon body as a tester. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab it here. Got a Canon Rebel T6i. And this is an EFS mount lens. So we're looking at the white square, white square. And this T6i allows both EF and EFS mount lenses, but it is a crop sensor. So this will actually give you more optical range than even 250 millimeters. It looks to be in good shape. There's a little bit of wear on the body of the lens, like right here. Lens glass, I'll get it cleaned up, but otherwise looks good. And let's try taking pictures and see if autofocus works. The autofocus, uh, you want to test and you want to make sure it's in autofocus mode which is right here. So I'll take a picture. Oh yeah. Very, very quick focusing on this. I took a picture of the Sony camera that I'm using to film this video and autofocus looks good. This lens appears to be in good working condition and the value of this lens in the used market has gone up a little bit over the last few years. Uh, you're looking at a value of around $150 on this in good working condition. So that's a win. Stay hydrated, my friends. All right, next camera. This one comes with a charger. And it looks like that might be an LPE-10 charger. And we've got a Rebel T6 body here. Nice. what she looks like and physically appears to be in actually pretty good shape and this camera was released by Canon 10-12 uh, years ago very 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 popular model uh, one of the best-selling Canon DSLRs at the time and that was when DSLR photography was kind of at its peak 
Autofocus in current generations of Canon, Sony, and Panasonic is quite a bit better than this, but it's a, still a good camera and you can use all of Canon's EF and EFS mount lenses on this body. So let's go ahead and put that 55 to 250 on here. Put the battery in. Turned it on and nothing happened. And this is a charged battery that I just used in a different model. Let me grab another battery just in case, another Canon LPE-10. Okay, got a different one here. Nope. Great. Okay, so uh, this camera body is not powering on, and that's really unfortunate. Um, the value of this camera body only, you're looking at around $160, $170 in good shape. And this Canon Rebel T6 was released, I think, in 2015 or 2016, so eight, eight years ago or so. And when it was released, it was the best-selling model that uh, Canon made for quite a long time, actually. So this camera is not powering on with two separately charged batteries. And unfortunately, we're going to go from $175 projected value to around $50 to $60, as is not powering on in parts condition. So that is a big bummer. So we've got two, two busts so far and two winners. Okay, next camera. <clears throat> Canon PowerShot L360. This is a really nice camera in terms of value. Uh, it's actually stayed pretty close to its MSRP in terms of price. When this was released, I think it was around a 269, 299 MSRP. And the value in the used market of the Canon ELF 360, if it's in good working condition, is actually going to be in the $275 range. So this camera actually uses the same battery as the other two Canons we tested, the NB11L. So I'll go ahead and put that in here. It has an SD card in there. Power's on. Lens looks good. Let's uh, try moving the lens in and out. Nice. It's got a pretty decent 12x optical zoom, actually. Let's try taking the picture. Okay, there's our picture. So this camera is in good working condition. If you pair this with a USB cable and the memory card that's already included, the value on the Canon PowerShot L360, like I said before, is going to be around 275. So that's a big win. This was actually one of the most valuable cameras that was in this lot. So we've got three winners and two stinkers. Next camera, Canon PowerShot L110. And Canon released this model, the ELF-110, in 2012. And the MSRP at the time was $249. And the value in the used market has gone up quite a bit over the last few years. This was a camera that back in 2014, 2015, 2016, that would sell for around 100 bucks. And now the value's gone up to around 150 to 200 in good working condition. But uh, I see a big issue with this camera just out of the gate without even turning it on. There is a crack on the LCD screen. So the LCD screen's got a crack on it, and unfortunately that is going to affect the value in a pretty big way, even if it is working. This camera actually uses, I believe, the same NV11L battery as the others. So pull another one out, turn it on. It does power on. Way more visible now that we've got the, uh... take a look at that. So you can see the crack down here. It spreads all the way around there. Um, dang. Okay, let's just try taking a few pictures and see if it's working otherwise. A little bit noisy, common with the ELF-110. I've sold many of these over the years. I've actually sold over 20,000 used digital cameras in the last 10 years. So I've seen almost every model made by major manufacturers during that time. And I'm able to go through the menus and reset everything pretty quickly uh, just because I've done it so often. Flash? Yeah, flash fires.
And there's probably even some people watching this that are able to repair or replace the LCD screen. Because I do so much volume, it's not something that I'm able to spend a lot of time doing, is doing a lot of intricate repairs, but someone else will. So this value of this camera in the condition that it's in with the crack on the LCD still has value. I would probably sell this on eBay for around $75 in the parts section, uh, working with LCD crack. We went from a $200 projected value in good working condition to $75. So we've got three, let's see, we've got one, two, three, three lemons and three winners so far. So not shaping up to be the best. Next camera. Yeah. Oh, I forgot there was even a film camera in here. Cool. Canon EOS Alon 2E. Got the lens cap. This, is had a, this has a 35 to 80 millimeter EF lens on it, which I don't think was the kit lens. I think it came with a 28 to 105 or the body only. Uh, this camera was actually released by Canon, I think, in 1995. So it's almost 30 years old if it was one of the earlier production cameras does have a fair amount of wear to the body, but the biggest issue, one of the biggest issues you see is a broken latch here, not allowing the back cover to close. And this one shuts properly, so that is good. I don't need film to film test this, but I am gonna test the flash and the focus. And this uses, I believe, a 2CR5 battery. And we're going to flip it from the red L to the green square. And this top menu should uh, turn on. And it does. So that's a good start. The lens glass itself actually looks quite good as well. I like to see that. And I'm going to set it to a single shot mode. And we'll try taking a picture with this. Flash pops up, and let's start taking a picture. Wow, nice. Now let me see if the focus is working properly. Yeah, it is. Cool. I think this has three-point autofocus as well. Okay, cool. This thing is a pretty beefy camera. Um, Quality-wise, it was kind of an intermediate camera that was released. I think the MSRP was $600, which in today's money is probably over 1000 So it wasn't a cheap camera. Value on this boxy little SLR camera is going to be about 75 bucks in working condition. So that is a win. Go ahead and put that down over here. What do we got here? Ooh, Canon PowerShot SD1200. This camera was released by Canon in 2008. Um, I believe the MSRP was around 200 bucks. Oh, it actually powers on. I didn't even check the battery first. Got a clicking noise with the lens. And let's try taking a picture. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. It's not actually focusing either not focusing at all at any optical range. E. Okay, let's go ahead and just reset the camera just for kicks. Could be set to like a macro mode or something. Let's try focusing again. And this is what I mean by focusing, by not focusing properly. So let's go ahead and set up a little charger here. And so this camera should focus on that charger, and it's not focusing at all. So there's something going on with the lens, unfortunately. If this camera was in good working condition, the value of the blue color, which is a little bit of a premium, would be around $125. As is with the camera powering on and taking pictures but not focusing, uh, value in parts condition of this camera would be about 40 bucks. So we went from 125 to 40, and this is kind of our fourth lemon. So this box is shaping up to be not quite a disaster, but uh, we're getting closer and closer to break even, which is not what I like to see. 
E! And with that last camera, we are at a projected value of $860 off of that $600 original investment. One item left, and that is going to be another lens. And it is the Canon 50 millimeter STM lens. And this copy appears to be in good shape. Just needs a little bit of a clean, but optically looks good. Uh, you want to look for fungus and dust inside of the lens, fungus, dust, and haze inside of the lens, and then we want to test autofocus on this as well. So I'll pull out my Rebel T6i testing body again. This is a really great lens. Um, if you pair it with an APS-C size sensor like this T6i, the optical range on this is actually closer to 80 millimeters. On a full-frame camera, it would actually be the 50 millimeter. And it gives you some good bokeh too. Let's, uh, There we go. So we got the lens in focus, and everything else is kind of out of focus. So uh, the lens does appear to be working fine. I see a little bit of dust internally, but I do not see any haze or uh, fungus. And one of the ways to check on that, I have some quite a few bright lights right here on either side of me. And you're actually able to look at it in the light, and you can get a really good idea of what's going on internally. And yeah, there is a bit of dust inside, but no haze or mold. And hazer mold can affect the image quality depending on lighting conditions. Um, but it is not present here. And this lens, I think, new is around $129, $139. And in the used market, it holds its value pretty well. You're looking at in the $80 to $90 range. So with this lens and the last item in this Canon lot, we are looking at a projected value from the $600 auction win of $950. And when you factor in around 12% for eBay, which is where I sell most of my items, and then you factor in roughly $10 uh, shipping per item for the 10 items that you sold, granted some of the lighter weight ones will be more and some of the heavier ones will be a little, potentially a little more than that, we're looking at a projected net of $735 off of this entire Canon buy from a $600 purchase, leaving us a total net profit of $135 for a $600 investment. And that is probably one of the worst buys that I've made in recent memory. And it was because we had a 40% lemon rate. Normally lemon rates for me are in the 20% range, so this was double that. And part of that is just luck of the draw, where you're sourcing the cameras from, if they're honest when they say they're untested. Uh, I bought some untested lots before where literally nothing worked. Yeah, clearly they're, they were tested. Um, so part of it is making sure that whoever you're buying from is being honest and upfront with you. Um, and I think they were in this case. It's just, it is what it is. There wasn't any close-ups of that broken screen. And the other ones, you couldn't really tell unless you put a camera battery in and actually tested them. So there we have it. For a couple hours work, $135 profit. But you got to factor in the time that some of these will take to sell, and that's an investment I wouldn't make again. So this was probably the first overall lemon buy that I've had uh, and filmed on this channel. And I hope that the next video will result in a little more profit. As always, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. And check out this video right here. It's another unboxing video I did, and my return on investment was quite a bit better. No matter what you're shooting with, iPhone, DSLR camera, point two camera, just get out there and take some pictures. Peace.